Uncertainty surrounding the last few years has many of us prioritizing our wealth and of course much of it stems from the state of our finances. Now local financial professional JT McDaniel from McDaniel Financial is here to show us how to focus on the pillars of a successful financial plan. Now JT joins us to kick off the first part of a five part series and to also talk more about the importance of the first pillar which is having an estate plan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, first let's talk about that. What are the pillars and how do we know where to start exactly? Yeah, so that's a great question. When somebody comes into my office, one of the first things I ask them, where does it hurt? You know, what problem are you trying to fix here? So that's where you start. Any good advisor is going to try to figure out where you are and address those particular issues. Now these five pillars we use to fill in the gaps, to round out the whole thing. And those five pillars are estate planning, which we'll talk about today. Another is risk management. How do we plan for the bad things that might happen? The next one is income. Let's make sure you always have money to spend. That's important. Uh, the next thing is taxes. That's the fourth pillar. Taxes, nobody wants to spend more than they absolutely have to. You don't want to overpay in taxes. Uh, and the last one is investments, which is an interesting animal. Investments is simply the tools and resources to accomplish the goals as defined in those first four pillars. And so everybody has access to essentially the same tools and resources and investments. The question is, is how do you actually apply them? And so we're going to start with estate planning today because, you know, we've all already had a segment on estate yes. planning and we can we can probably even link to it if we if you really want to. But there's we went more in depth, so I'll hit the high points on that today. But then I also want to touch on on kind of what to expect as this series goes on and how to make it personal and make it actually make a difference in your life. Absolutely. Now, getting into more of estate planning, it sounds like something that's only for the wealthy. Is that necessarily true? So I've never met anybody that didn't need an estate plan. A estate plan is nothing more than providing for the things that you own, manage, and care about. Now, if you think about that, you got, you got a house, you got cars, you got kids. Well, then that checks all the boxes for needing an estate plan. It might be a very simple estate plan. It could be incredibly complex, but the fact is you need the plan written down because if you don't write it and go through the correct channels, the state ends up making those decisions for you, and you don't want that. Most people don't want that. And so the five parts of an estate plan, the first is a will. Very simply, a will says, here's what I want to happen to all my stuff after I'm gone. You'll name somebody to execute on those wishes, and then you'll name somebody to take care of your minor kids if you have any minor kids. Um, the next thing is what's called a living will. It's a different thing. Some people call it a DNR. And what that does is that that makes the decision, you make the decision about what you want your end of life care to look like. What that does is that takes the burden, the, the torture, the anguish off of your loved ones from them having to make that decision. So that's an important one. The next two are both powers of attorney. One's health and one's business and financial issues. And, but they both give another person the authority to act on your behalf, assuming you can't make those decisions yourself. And it's not an absolute all or none thing. You can be specific or flexible about it. Um, and those can be revoked as well. The, the last thing is, is a pretty surgical tool, so to speak. It's a trust. Not everybody needs a trust. In fact, it's the one that you're least likely to need. But it can be very handy if you're trying to protect assets from something like, like nursing home expenses or from um, tax burdens. Uh, this is an important one is, is if you might have a kid that wouldn't be able to handle getting a whole bunch of money poured in his lap. So those are the, those are the five things and, and that have to do with an estate plan. The main thing there is to find somebody that can help you get clarity and then send you to the right uh, professional, an attorney, to actually make that make that into existence for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, in your line of work, have you seen that some people or most people even don't have these type of preparations or estate planning in place? I mean, we've recently seen it with several stars who've passed away, mm -hmm. their families having to take these proceedings to court just mm -hmm. to figure all of it out because they didn't have this plan set up. Would you say everyday people like you and me, we I mean, we really need to take this seriously. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you when you're when you're a star, when you're in the news, then all of a sudden it becomes a public record in many cases and now it's it's a big thing and not only you've got the fourth cousin's roommate from 20 years ago now they want exactly. some money so that's that's one of the issues that you have when you don't have it written down in specific um, but for most people 
what it really does is it takes away some of the pain and the anxiety and the sleepless nights of having to now clean up the mess. If it's done well, you can have it you know, pretty, pretty neatly put wrapped with a bow on top and say, hey, here's what to do next. Does that Absolutely. make sense? Yes, it yeah. does. And just briefly, JT, mm -hmm. tell us what else we can expect to see from this series moving forward. Absolutely. We're going to make it personal. So nobody really cares about these pillars, something off in the distance. It's, we're going to make this, this mean something to you, how to actually use these things in your personal life. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. I met a fellow the other day. He said the most important thing to him is performance. But you've got to define what performance is. Let's call him John. 20-year-old John might want 10% of growth on an annual basis. Well, that same guy at age 60 might say, hey, I need $10,000 a month of income that I'm never going to outlive. You use different tools. You use different investments for that. You use different concepts. You know, I think it'd be fun for us to do a, a segment on, on advisors, you know, how to choose the right financial advisor and do you need one in the first place? Because not every advisor handles all these things. It, it can help to really have somebody that focuses on wherever you are. Absolutely. Anyway. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm so excited. I'm glad that you're excited. And I can't wait to share more of this uh, meaningful and helpful information mm -hmm. with the rest of our viewers. Thank you for joining us today. Okay. And you can find the latest in financial headlines by downloading our KSLA News 12 app right now.